The Miko Yangurovici 150 family was a series of prototype single-seat fighter interceptor aircraft designed and built by the Miko Yangurovich Design Bureau in the Soviet Union from 1955. Design and development, to fulfill the needs of the PVO-4 a heavy interceptor to carry out automatic interceptions, the MiG Bureau had developed a range of large fighter aircraft starting with the swept-wing I-3 series, followed by the I-7 and the I-75. The requirement for supersonic interception speed and the ability to carry the heavy avionics systems dictated the size. In comparison the contemporary MiG-21F weighed 4,819 kilograms and was 15.76 meters long, compared with 12,345 kilograms and 18.14 meters respectively. For the U-150, the MAP ordered the Miko Yan OKB to build prototypes of the new interceptor to be armed with either K6, K7, K8, K9 unguided rockets, or an aimable twin cannon installation. Automatic guidance to the interception point was to be provided by URUGAN-5 Integrated Weapons Systems, variants, the initial missile-armed version, designated U-150, flew for the first time on 8 July 1960, after extensive ground checks of systems and a delay in delivery of a flightworthy engine. Flight tests progressed slowly, hampered by the very short life of the R-15 engine, as well as problems with aileron buffeting, brake parachute failure and the engine accessory gearbox disintegrating. Manufacturers' flight tests over 42 flights revealed very high rates of climb, impressive maximum speed using less than full throttle, and a phenomenal service ceiling of at least 21,000 meters. Meters. Installation of weapons systems was not carried out on the U-150 and it was not authorized for production. The development continued with the U-151 and U-152. The U-151 cannon-armed version was designed in parallel with the U-150 but did not proceed to the hardware stage. The weapon system was to have consisted of twin TKB-4. 495 the Makarov TKB 539 cannon, with a rate of fire of 2,000 RDs per minute, mounted on a rotating ring in tilting mounts. The mounts could tilt plus or minus 30 degrees and the mounting ring could rotate 360 degrees, which gave the installation a 60 degrees cone of fire around the center line of the mounting ring. To accommodate the ring turret the inlet duct was lengthened with the rotating ring forming the inlet lip. Wind tunnel testing confirming that the extended inlet duct would actually improve aerodynamic and inlet performance. A lengthened inlet was retained for all later U-150 series aircraft. Further tunnel testing with an inlet mounting fitted with cannon revealed destabilizing forces when the cannon were deflected, making accurate weapon aiming impossible and precluding further development. Studies were carried out with the cannon mount aft of the cockpit to reduce a stabilizing moment as the Y-151-2, but no hardware resulted. The two single-engine Y-152s were completed with improved R-15-300 engines as the Y-152-1 and Y-152-2, but reliability remained an issue. With only limited development flying, weapons system testing and world record flights carried out, the poor reliability of the engine and the cancellation of the intended K-9 Uragan 5B weapon system brought the U-152 program to a close. Crop delta wings with greater area allowed the large K-80 or K-9 missiles to be carried on wingtip launch. World record flights were carried out by the first prototype U-152-1 in 1961 and 
1962 registered with the fire as the Ye-166, the second aircraft, Ye-152-2, was returned to Miko Yan for conversion to the Ye-152M, featuring an axisymmetric convergent-divergent nozzle and canards on either side of the forward fuselage, which were soon removed. The Ye-152M was retired to the Central Air Force Museum at Monino misleadingly marked as the Ye-166 which was, in fact, the unmodified Ye-152-1. Ye-152A, the Miko Yangurevich Ye-152A was an twin-engined version of the Ye-152, sharing its general layout but utilizing two Tumansky R-11 after-burning turbojets mounted side-by-side -side in a revised rear fuselage. The change in engine type necessitated by the extremely poor reliability of the R-15 led to a wide and rear fuselage with large ventral fins. The majority of the airframe was identical to the Ye-152, incorporating the extended inlet and fuselage found to be advantageous during testing for the proposed Ye-151 cannon-armed variant of the Ye-150. Due to the use of fully developed and reliable R-11 engines the Ye-152A was ready for flight in July 1959 and continued to fly on test duties at the Miko Yangurevich Test Center until it crashed in 1965. Armament was to have been two K-9 air-to-air missiles. As part of the Ye-152 9V weapon system featuring the TSK Bialma's TSP-1 fire control radar, the Ye-152A was assigned the NATO reporting name Flipper after a fly pass during the 1961 Aviation Day display at Tashino and also erroneously labeled as the MiG-23. U-152P, a proposed development powered by the more reliable R-15-300 engine and using the Uragan 5B weapon control system and carrying the large K-80 long-range arm, U-152M. The U-152-2 was returned to the Miko Yan factory for conversion to the U-152M, fitted with small canard surfaces either side of the forward fuselage and an R-15-300 engine fitted with axisymmetric convergent-divergent nozzle, allowing the ejector ring around the rear fuselage to be dispensed with. After initial flight testing the canards were removed leaving the mounting structures behind. Used for further testing of the R-15 engine and Uragan weapon systems, the U-152M was retired to the Central Air Force Museum at Monino bearing the erroneous identity E-166 and three red stars to signify the world. Records set by its sister ship, the U-152-1. Fictitious designation of the U-152-1 used when registering the world records with the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, also applied to the U-152-M displayed at Monino as an intelligence rose, and an erroneous designation applied by Western intelligence observers to the U-152-A after the display at Tashino in 1961. URAGAN-5 Development of the URAGAN-5 automatic weapon system was initiated by the Council of Ministers in 1955 to intercept supersonic bombers flying at 10 to 25,000 meters altitude at 1,600 to 2,000 kilometers per hour up the 100 to 120 kilometers range from the interceptor base. 
The system relied on ground-based radar to guide the interceptor to an intercept with the target and aircraft-based radar and weapon aiming systems. To complete the mission using the following components, a high-resolution ground-based radar system to provide accurate position and height data at a range of 345 kilometers, active interrogation system automatic guidance facility digital control computer Miko Yangurevich E152 A Miko Yangurevich E150 P Miko Yangurevich E150 M armament options included 2 by 30 mm cannon in a tilting rotatable mount unguided rockets, 2x Groshen K6 air-to-air -air missiles, 2x Toropov K7 air-to-air -air missiles, 2x Kaliningrad K8 air-to-air -air missiles, 2x Raduga K9 air-to-air -air missiles, a combination of delays in development of the electronic components, missiles and poor reliability of the Tumansky R-15 engines for the aircraft component led to the URAGAN-5 system, fitted to U-150 derivatives being cancelled in 1962. Specifications Data from Gordon General Characteristics Length 19.656 meters Wingspan 8.793 meters Wing area 40.02 square meters Empty weight 10,900 kilograms 10,900 Max takeoff weight 14,350 kilograms. Power plant 1 times Tumansky R15 minus 300 turbojet 66.7 kilonewtons thrust dry 99.6 kilonewtons with afterburner. Performance maximum speed, 3,030 km per hour at 15,400 m, Mach 2.8 plus, range, 1,470 km. Service ceiling, 22,680 m. Rate of climb, 62.5 m per second, 5.33 minutes to 20,000 m. Time to altitude 4.5 minutes to 20,000 meters. Armament guns 2x DKB 495, a TKB 539 cannon in an aimable mount. Missiles 2x K7 or 2x K6 or 2x K9 air to air missiles. Avionics URAGAN 5 weapons control system. 